So in this video, we're going to look at starch hydrolysis, and this is activity 5-13. And so we're going to start with day one, which is the setup for this test. So the purpose of the starch hydrolysis test is to determine if bacteria can break down starch. Remember that hydrolysis, hydro refers to water, lysis is breaking. So we want to see, do bacteria break down starch as a food source? So this experiment would normally be done in pairs. And the way that this would work would be that you would get one starch auger plate. And so this plate has starch in it. And so you would draw a line down the middle and you would label one side BS. That's going to get Bacillus subtilis, that bacteria. And the other side, you would label SA, which is for Staph aureus. Staph aureus is a pathogen, and we usually keep this in a tube that has a yellow cap. And that serves as kind of a warning to say that this one is pathogenic, treat it with care. Now, these two bacteria are in a broth format. And so what you would do is you would, using aseptic technique, you would dip your loop into the broth. So let's say for BS, so Bacillus subtilis, dip it in the broth, and then you would do just one broad stroke down. So meaning you kind of lay the loop flat to get one broad streak. Then you would flame your loop and let it cool, and then one broad streak for Staph aureus. And so once you do your two streaks of your two different organisms, you would put the cap on, uh, the lid on the plate, and then you would put it in the incubator. And so here's a video demonstrating the technique. So in this experiment, we are going to look at starch hydrolysis. And so what I have is I have a plate, and on this plate I have starch. So this is a starch plate, and you'll notice that I divided my plate in half, and I labeled one side BS, Bacillus subtilis, and the other side is labeled SA for Staph aureus. So when I inoculate this, I'm going to do one broad streak of each organism on each side. So I'm going to do that using my loop. And so my loop, I'm going to go flat to give a broad streak. I'm starting with liquid cultures, and I'm going to use the liquid cultures to transfer onto this plate. Now, I need to be careful because liquid cultures are more likely to spill, and especially the yellow one, the yellow cap is Staph aureus. Staph aureus is a pathogen. So we have to be extra careful when we're working with this organism. So I'm going to take my plate and I'm going to put it by my flame. And since I'm ready to go, I'm going to flip it auger side down so I'm streaking on my plate. I'm going to start with B subtilis first. So I'm just going to vortex to mix. Take the cap, uh, palm, between palm and ring finger. But first let me flame my loop. And let it cool. So I'm going to let that cool while it's cooling. Let me re-vortex. All right. Cap between uh, pinky and ring finger. Flame it. Go in, pick up some bacteria. Come back out. Now I have liquid culture on my loop. I need to keep that loop hand as steady as possible. So set my tube down. On the side that I labeled BS, one broad streak. I just need one broad streak, and then I'm going to flame sterilize. I'm going to let it cool. While I'm letting that cool, I'm going to get ready to do my Staph aureus. So keep my loop close to my flame. Then I'm going to vortex, cap between my pinky and my ring finger, flame it, go in, pick up some bacteria, flame it, put the cap on, again keep your loop hand as steady as possible, and then one broad streak going down, and flame it. And so I would take my starch plate, I would turn it auger side up, 
and I would place it in the incubator and let it grow for 48 hours. And then after, I would take this plate and after the time period, I would flip it back this way and I would have growth on my plate. I would add my iodine to test for starch and we'll talk about what the readout should look like on this. So now let's talk about the readout for our starch hydrolysis. So again, the purpose of the starch hydrolysis test is to determine if bacteria can break down or hydrolyze starch. So in this experiment, starch is our substrate and it is a complex carbohydrate, meaning it is a polysaccharide. It's many sugars linked together. The enzyme that is used to metabolize the starch is going to be amylase. Now, starch, being a polysaccharide and being a complex carbohydrate, is a big, bulky substrate. It's big, it's bulky, it will give problems to get into the cell. So what happens is, is because starch is big and it can't get into the cell on its own, Amylase is an example of what we call an exoenzyme. Exo, think exit. This is an enzyme that is secreted out of the bacterial cell. So it's gonna be released from the bacteria and it's going to break down the starch outside of the bacteria and it will produce glucose. So it will break it down and release the monosaccharides. And so our product for this is going to be glucose. And again, this is our simple sugar. It's a monosaccharide. So the purpose of amylase is to break down the starch into smaller parts, so break it down into glucose, and then glucose can get transported into the cell, and the cell can then use that glucose for um, cellular respiration or for fermentation. Basically, the cell will use it to make ATP. And so some bacteria will produce amylase as an exoenzyme. You also produce amylase. Amylase is produced in saliva and it's there to help begin to break down starch early during digestion so that that big polysaccharide gets broken down to its smaller parts as it moves through the digestive tract. And so amylase is produced and secreted into your saliva to also help to metabolize starch but some bacteria can have amylase as well. And again, the goal is to metabolize the starch, break it down into smaller parts, and then transport the glucose into the cell so that the cell can use that glucose to make ATP. Now, for this test, our reagent is going to be iodine. And iodine is going to detect the presence of starch. So meaning that if starch is present, Iodine will change color. Iodine alone is this amber color. It's kind of this golden yellow color. When starch is present, iodine will react with the starch and it turns black. So in this experiment, remember I said that this is a starch plate, that this plate has starch on it. It has starch in the media. So notice that in this one, here is the growth. This is where the bacteria grew. And notice that around where the bacteria grew is black. So what it means if it's black, what that tells you is starch was not broken down. Remember that starch is on the plate. So starch was not broken down and it's still present in the auger. And so as a result, when we add the iodine, again, the iodine is our reagent, when we add the iodine, it's gonna turn black because the starch is still there. So that is going to be our negative result. So if we see black around the growth, that tells us that the bacteria did not produce amylase because they did not break down the starch and the starch is still present. And so that would be a negative in this test. So black around the growth is going to be our negative. Starch is still present, it was not broken down, it reacted with the iodine and it turned black. Now, let's say we have this clearing around the growth. So here is our growth and there's no black in this region. What that tells us is that starch was broken down and is no longer present in the auger. It's not there anymore because it was broken down into glucose. So when we have glucose and we don't have starch, 
it's going to have a clear zone. It's not that it's necessarily reacting with the glucose, that's not what's happening. It's that when we add the iodine, the starch is no longer there because that starch was broken down into glucose. And so because there's no more starch, um, it will not react with the iodine and does not turn black. So if we see clear zones around the growth, that is going to be our positive in this test. So negative would be if we have black around the growth, because that means starch is still present and was not broken down. If we have clearing around the growth, that is going to be a positive because the starch was broken down, it was hydrolyzed, and there's no longer starch, so it's not gonna react with iodine, and you're not gonna get black around the colonies. So now, let's talk about some of the questions in the question sets that you might have been a little unsure about. And so question number 119 says, after adding iodine, what would an, un an uninoculated plate of starch auger look like and why? So what that means is if I have my starch auger plate and there's no bacteria on it, if I add iodine, what will that look like? So think about it for a minute. If you need to think longer, just pause it and then push play when you're ready. And so if you have an uninoculated plate, the plate is gonna be black because the auger has starch in it and there's nothing in there to break down the starch. So the starch is still present and your plate would be black. Now, question 122. What conclusion can you draw from the fact that after iodine has been added, the clear area on starch auger around the colonies of organisms that is positive for starch hydrolysis is only found a short distance from the colonies? And it says, if the organism is positive for starch hydrolysis, why isn't the whole plate clear after the iodine is added? And so what that's basically saying is, look at this example of the positive. So here is the growth, right? And around the growth is where you see clearing. Notice the whole plate is not clear. It's the area around the growth. Think about why that is. So where the bacteria is, right, the bacteria is going to be what produces the amylase. And notice that amylase is an exoenzyme. It's going to be secreted out of the bacterial cell. So the bacteria are going to make it and they're going to secrete it outside of their cell. So the clear zone around the bacteria is dependent on the diffusion of the amylase, meaning how far the amylase diffused. So the longer you let this plate grow, the bigger the clear zone would be because as the bacteria would keep producing amylase, the amylase is gonna diffuse more and more and your clear zone is gonna be a lot bigger. So the reason that the whole plate is not clear is because it's dependent on the bacteria making the amylase and secreting the amylase out of the cell and that only can go as far as it can diffuse. So in theory, if you let this growth go long enough, you could get a situation where the whole plate is clear, but typically not in our time frame. It would take a long time for enough amylase to be secreted for that to be the case. So here is the result for our experiment. So when we inoculated our plate, remember I had two streaks. I had Bacillus subtilis and I had Staph aureus. And so notice when I look at my plate, notice that the bulk of the plate is going to be black because the starch is still present. So if I'm looking at this and I'm comparing B. subtilis and Staph aureus, which organism is going to be positive for starch hydrolysis? And the answer is B. subtilis is going to be positive because you get a clearing around the growth. And so what that tells us is that the bacteria produced amylase 
the amylase was released from the cell and it is going to break down the starch in the region close to the growth. And if starch is no longer present, it's not going to react with iodine and therefore will not turn black. So again, the clearing, right, the lack of the black around the growth, that is our positive test. That tells us that starch is no longer present. It was broken down by the bacteria. Now, B. subtilis, Bacillus subtilis, is related to Bacillus cereus. And you might recall that when I talked about B. cereus, B. cereus, remember, causes food poisoning in rice. Now, look at what B. cereus can also do this. Look what they can use for food. They can hydrolyze starch. So if you think about rice, right, rice is very starchy. It has a lot of starch in it. And so that's why when you have B. cereus, for example, remember that bacillus species produce endospores, right? They are an endospore producing bacteria. So in the case of B. cereus, it is a spore forming bacteria. It's often found in soil. So it's on the grain of rice. Now, when the rice gets processed and it gets dehydrated, that's gonna cause the bacteria to form endospores. So the endospores are in with the rice. Then when the endospores are in the rice, the endospores are resistant to heat. So you cook the rice and the endospores still survive. But as the temperature starts to cool, if we leave that rice warming for long periods of time, now we've created the perfect storm because now it's warm, it's moist because you added water when you cooked the rice. So warm, it's moist, and it has a food source that they can use, which is starch. And so B. cereus would then germinate, it would go back to being metabolically active, and it would produce a toxin that causes food poisoning within several hours of eating contaminated rice. And so now you can see why B. cereus is able to cause food poisoning in rice, because it is able to use starch in the rice as a food source. Now, notice for Staph aureus. Staph aureus, we can see growth. So the bacteria did grow, right? They did not utilize starch as a food source because notice that the starch is still present, which is why it's black around there. So if they did not use starch, what would you guess that Staph aureus used as a food source which allowed it to grow? And the answer is, peptones, right? It's going to use proteins instead. So it does grow. Notice I do see growth, but it did not hydrolyze the starch. The starch was not broken down. The starch is still intact. It's still present, and therefore the iodine will react with the starch, and it will turn black. So Staph aureus is going to be our negative for our starch hydrolysis. It is not able to hydrolyze the starch. Now, when you're studying this for the exam, you don't need to memorize which one was positive for starch hydrolysis and which one was negative. That is not important, but if given a plate and we labeled them A and B, you should be able to tell me which one would be positive for starch hydrolysis, and that would be the one that has the clearing around the growth because that means that the starch was hydrolyzed, it was broken down, and it does not react with the iodine, and that's why it's not black. And so that is the end of our starch hydrolysis.